All right, STEM Academy sophomores, welcome, welcome, welcome in. Um, I'm going to drop in real quick this document we're going to start with, and uh, then we're going to get into what is involved in your class project for this year, okay? So um, STEM Academy sophomores is where we're starting right now. Um, I am recording this session for anybody who can't make it so that we can make sure that they get this information. And if you have any questions, I'm going to ask that you either put them in the chat or that you save them until the end because there's a good chance that I'll answer them as we keep going, okay? So please um, save your questions till the end or drop them in the chat and we'll make sure they get answered. So thank you for being here. Shout out to Ms. Doran for being here. Awesome, that's fantastic. Also, that's fantastic. She is awesome. And, uh, and I'm just gonna get rolling with this. So we're gonna start by looking at the specific class project details for everybody, right? And you've received this document. This is the one I just put the link in, but this is where really you have how we're gonna handle all of this this year, including the master spreadsheet with your communication devices on it and everything else that you'll need to, uh, to make sure you get all of this stuff done. I'm gonna go through a little bit of this to start and then I'll jump into the specific sophomore class project, okay? Now, y'all, as opposed to the freshmen, I trust you to be a little more independent and you've seen some of this stuff before. So I'm gonna go a little bit quicker than I did with them. So uh, just again, drop those questions in there if you've got them, all right? We'll start with this. This is where we're getting going with everything. There is the master spreadsheet that y'all have likely already seen linked right away that has who your STEM teacher mentor is, the Google Drive folder for them. So these are specific to the teachers. And then these Google Drive folders over here are specific to your group. They are shared with you already so that you can already edit and save all of your materials in there. So I'm gonna ask that you save everything that you're doing for this project in those folders to make sure that it's accessible to you and your group members and potentially to us for your end project results so that we can get all those posted and everything else. Now, last year you were assigned a country. This year we're gonna give you a little more freedom because we trust you all a little more. You've gone a little further with some of your STEM stuff. So you're gonna get to pick between a couple options for your um, topic for this year. Now, before you go ahead and look at, I'm just gonna use group two here as an example and say glass or ferrous metal. I don't know what ferrous metal is, I pick glass. Um, let me get through what the project is and make sure that you understand what you're looking at because ferrous metal may actually be the way to go, okay? So um, some of these terms, just because you don't know what ferrous or non-ferrous metals are, doesn't mean you don't wanna pick those. Let's talk about what the project is and then you can determine where you wanna go with it from there, okay? So to jump back over, I did make an explanatory video for this document that we're looking at right now as a whole, in case you need to go back and look at that. That's absolutely available. And the big thing that the rest of this talks about is reaching out to your group members, contacting them, making sure you have your Google Doc set up to share communication um, devices, like the best way that it's going to be for you to communicate with your group members. Um, make sure you're getting that stuff done and rolling so that you can get running with all this as we keep moving here, okay? Um, so you'll set all this up. A lot of these items, and you see this red note right here, um, you're going to need to make these copies for and save into a folder. Most of them should force copy. So when you open like this document right here, it's going to force you to make a copy and then save it somewhere. So just save it in your assigned folder and then you'll be good to go. All right. There's also a project introduction, and this is for everybody this year. It does pertain a little bit more to the freshman project, but we're going to get everybody to do this given the virtual environment that we're in. So this will be the first thing you'll do as your group at your first meeting. You'll go through and you'll play this game put out by the EPA. It's called Generate, and it's about um, properly allocating resources to, uh, to efficiently produce energy um, based on what you're given. And so it does, again, correspond a lot to the freshman project, but it's still a great activity for y'all to kind of get an icebreaker, get to know each other, make sure you're all comfortable working together. And it's a, it's a thought process activity, too. So get you thinking about energy and sustainability. Um, so I want to make sure that you all know those things and uh, the couple major dates that we've got going on here also. So by the third, we would like y'all to have this intro project done and saved in your folders. If for some reason you can't manage to get your group together for an actual meeting until like the fourth or the fifth, that's not as big a deal for that first deadline. But we would like these deadlines to be the aims of when you're getting everything done. All right. Starting tomorrow through the 18th of May is when we've allotted that work time for this project. And you'll have some specific deadlines for your actual sophomore project. And I'll make sure to explain what those are in just a minute. But um, this is the overall work time for this. So we're, I mean, almost three months that we're doing this stuff, okay? So that should be plenty of time, even in the environment that we're in, to get everything done. On the 18th is when we want everything fully submitted and saved in your um 
your groups folder is what you'll do. You'll just save everything in there. And that gives me about a week to get everything posted and get that STEM web symposium website made so that we can get everything done um, with that. And I'll get you a lot of details on that as we get there. Now, one other note I do want to make when you jump over to this master spreadsheet, if you are having trouble coordinating with your group and trying to figure out when you can actually meet, assuming everybody's virtual or you've got half virtual and half in person and the people who are in person are on the different cohorts. Like I realized logistically, this is tough this year. So let's say you're in one of these first two groups and I am your mentor teacher. If you go to my folder here, you'll see a teacher info slide. And on that teacher info slide, there is a Google meet link. Okay. Now, these Google Meets are meant to be from noon to 1 p.m. every day of the week so that you can go there and collectively meet if you need to. Now, if I was your mentor and you needed me at your meeting, then you need to reach out to me and let me know that ahead of time. I'm not going to be in that meeting every single day just waiting for you to show up. But I will be there if you need some help with something. So just let me know that and I'll be happy to be there. Okay. Now, this could also work if y'all can't all find the exact time to get everything matched up and ready to roll. You should be able to open this up at like 2.30 also and meet then. This is meant to be a common meeting place if you need it for you to work on your projects, okay? They should be specific to your mentor teacher because if we just put one common meeting place out there for everybody, all of a sudden we have 100 people in the same meeting and that can't possibly be productive. So in this case, the worst is you've got like two groups in there at once and we'll handle that as we need to, okay? So there we go. Those are ways that we can meet, that we can get everything done, and the very basics for the intro there. And again, as sophomores, having been through a class project in the past, I'm comfortable sharing that much info with you before we jump down to the sophomore class project. So I'm going to open that up. We're going to get to that in just a moment. I see at least one or two questions, so I'm going to address those real quick. And if you want to go ahead and pull up this sophomore class project, that'd be awesome. Um, when is the meet link shut down for the day? It doesn't. It doesn't. So now I'm going to suggest you meet during that noon to 1 p.m. time. That is the suggested time that you can meet and work with your groups. OK, but it should be open the rest of the time as well. Now, as we jump over here, sustainability of recycling, um, you know that we have an energy and sustainability academy. And last year you focused mainly on energy, right, and the types of energy generation and things like that. But this year, we're going to shift a little bit more towards the sustainability aspect of our academy. And so it's going to focus largely on recycling, which is a very sustainable practice. Now, I've already put together a quick explanatory video for this document that we're looking at right now. It's just under four minutes. And that will stay on here if you need it for future reference. OK, but I want to go through this whole project with you and make sure you understand everything that's going on before you're expected to get into it. Now, I got this great quote that I thought was a, a, a fantastic intro here from a New York Times article. And that article is linked on here. And so you can check out the whole article if you need to. It talks about all this good stuff. It gives you a great introduction and background on, um, on where the state of recycling is in our country. But the, uh, the quote there is, recycling is collapsing in many parts of the country. And what a lot of people don't realize is that a large percentage of what you put in that recycle bin that you put out at the curb ends up in the landfill. And it's because people don't understand the proper things to put into recycling. The processes aren't as advanced as they could be for a lot of recycling. Um, a lot of times they're not efficient energy-wise, so you're actually losing money by doing the recycling instead of saving money and saving resources. And so a lot of governments and cities aren't doing it. They're saying, this is costing us money. We're not going to do this process. And they take it right from that recycling center and ship it right off to the dump. And that's something a lot of people don't realize and a sustainable practice that we need to encourage at a higher level. So that's why we're going to focus on it here. OK, so I'm going to get us into this intro real quick and then talk, uh, kind of show you the rest of the resources that are available. So we've all heard it a thousand times. Reduce, reuse, recycle. It's been the sustainability anthem of our country for generations. And I grew up hearing this as well. You've had another anthem sung to you as well regarding the free market economy, and that is survival of the fittest in the economic environment that is the United States of America. What happens when these two anthems don't match in tune? So a great debate is beginning in our country, and the future of recycling is at the center of it. Is it financially viable? Are we wasting energy on this process? Should we continue to recycle? And there are going to be people on both sides of this debate. And this is what we want y'all looking into. 
Okay, and we can't just say recycling as a whole. This is why you're given a couple different topics to choose from. Now, uh, there are two intro videos here. There's a quick TED talk here on recycling, the cost of recycling, and then from the good stuff, is recycling worth it? And I think that both of these are worth looking at. I highly suggest each member of your group look at both of these um, videos to get the background necessary. It's a total of like 15 minutes of video. So check those out. That's going to be really helpful. And you getting some background information to get you started on this project. The actual task for this project is going to be to create an environmental economics cost benefit analysis. Okay. Now, for more information on what that actually is, I've got another video linked right here. Um, this is Mr. Bozeman. He's Mr. Bozeman. <laughs> this is Mr. Anderson from Bozeman Science. Excuse me. Um, something I use a lot. He, he's a great source for uh, AP Physics videos, so I use him a lot in my class. But he breaks down what environmental economics mean. And so you'll want to take a look at that video as well. But as, what you're going to end up doing is putting together something like this, where you weigh the social, economic, and environmental aspects of the recycling method that you choose um, between your two different methods that are offered for you, okay? And it's going to be your job to determine whether or not this is a viable, useful process and what can be done to make it more sustainable in the long run, okay? So this clearly meets some of our academy connections here and that we are focusing on sustainability as part of this. But I always want to make sure you all understand how this fits into what we do in the STEM Academy. So that's why you've got this academy connections piece right here. Um, and then you have the project portions. And this is set up very similarly to the document that you used last year for your uh, STEM class project. And we are still pulling from your English 2 paper. So your English 2 paper should have been on or should be on that you're completing now um, research on, on these different processes. Now, you'll probably need to go more in depth into the specific process that you choose. But your first step here is always going to be research and analysis. OK, so that'll be your first step there. And whenever you're doing any part of this. So for this right here, you'll probably just make a Google Doc, drop it into your groups folder, not your mentor teachers or anything in your group specific folder. That Again, you found here. That's this column here on the right. OK. And that way it's shared with everybody in your group automatically because I've already shared those items, that those folders with every single person in your group. And uh, you'll be able to all access that. OK, the next piece here is to actually make that cost benefit analysis. And so the form that's linked right here will take you to to this where we've set up a template for you to actually do this with. OK, now um, I think everybody knows what a Venn diagram is. But if not, um, if, if you have questions about what a Venn diagram is, how it works, you can ask your mentor teacher or your group members. But the goal here is, let's say there's an aspect of this that's a social aspect, right? It's, a, it's an awareness campaign. Well, if it's an, economic, so, it's an economic and social aspect, we'd put it in this portion right here. If it's just social, we'd put it there. If it's social and environmental, we'd put it in here. And if it meets all three categories, we put it in this sustainability piece in the middle. And your video on environmental economics will further explain that process of how to put those things in the right spots. Okay. Again, this shared in folders by 416. The next thing to do is to come up with some innovative methods to improve this process, whether it be just informing the public on the better ways to do this, or it be creating a new process or a new distribution or collection method for your recycling or whatever it is. We want to see some innovative uh, methods to improve the process that you've chosen to address. And then your final presentation will be set up as a uh, science a scientific poster like it has been in the past and we'll want to make sure those are saved in your folders by the 18th so that we can get them posted on the stem academy website okay now we're always going to use the edp and this is something that y'all have seen for sure and will always be part of our thought process within the stem academy so you're going to use that edp as you work through this and if you take a look closely here um there are each step outlined directly towards what you're doing for your sophomore class project. So the ask is, what is the current state of recycling in the United States, right? This is the EDP applied to this project and should help you um, go through everything as, as you're getting to all the different parts. All right. So take a look at that and it will help guide you through this.
Now, the presentation information that's on here, it's going to be different. I'm going to get you all that info as it gets much closer, but it's going to go, we're going to present via our uh, symposium website again this year, as opposed to trying to do this in person. Clearly, that's not going to work. So details to come on that one. I've given you a number of project resources here, and they are, for the most part, specific to your recycling types. So I realized ferrous versus non-ferrous, I mean, this actually right here is specifically about the two differences between those. So if you have one of the metal recycling uh, methods as one of your potential topics, I would check out that and this and look through this information for both of your topics as a group before you pick one. All right. Highly suggest doing that. Um, this last little bit down here. Your groups and assigned mentors, that's just that big master spreadsheet that we've already looked at. You guys should already know who your groups are. I'm positive that that's the very first thing you all looked at when that email went out. Um, you've got your poster templates here as well, so you can pick whichever one of these you want to be your template. And there is a rubric posted also for what we're looking for in your projects as a whole. All right. So I'll ask for questions in just a moment. But a quick reminder, the things that you want to get done first are to make sure that you're reaching out and starting communication with your group. You're getting this student contact info form in your shared folder so that everybody has that method of contact and you are somehow reaching out to your group members or looking for someone else to reach out to you. Now, if no one else in your group has done it, do it. Be that person to initiate that. Okay, Be the leader. That's who you're going to want to be one day when you're applying for a job and you're applying for college and all that kind of stuff. The leader is the person who will get hired guaranteed. OK, but uh, but be that person and start reaching out to everybody else in your group and then figure out when you can get your project intro done. And then you'll be able to start the rest of your project from there. So I want to go ahead and open up for any questions. I've got a couple that are rolling in here already. Um, I'm going to get some of these answered with the recording still going just in case people who are watching have a similar question. OK, so you're researching the process used to recycle your resource. Um, co correct. Essentially. Yes. You're going to make sure that you understand your process and the current state of it and how efficient it is and how it works. And then you're going to try to improve on that to make that process, that recycling process for glass or paper or water or whichever type of metal you might have, um, more efficient. Yes. All these pages shown are linked in the original. Correct. Well, this is the document you want. And I'll drop this in one more time real quick. If you have this document right here, you have everything you need to complete your project. And so if you don't have this one bookmarked or saved, do that right now. OK, save that document because I'm not posting this on the STEM Academy website because it has some of y'all's information and shared stuff in it with this class, with this master spreadsheet. And I don't want to put that out as public info. OK, uh, the English project was about recycling in general. Our project. Correct. Correct, Will, exactly. So the English project was about recycling as a whole process, and that's where we needed to start, y'all. And now you'll get to choose between one of the two different specific types and then determine how you could um, better this process from there. These are great questions. Anybody got any more? Since we've got a little bit of, of a flat spot here, I'm going to stop the recording.